What's going on everybody, VD Engineering here. So back last year, I had made a video saying that if I reach 500 subscribers by the end of 2017, then I'd be very happy. But <laughs> Well, it turns out that I've had more than 800 subscribers now. So I do appreciate your support. Thank you guys for watching. You guys motivate me to create more videos of engineering, technology, and just science and technology in general, because my goal on this channel is to inspire you guys to pursue a career in engineering and to also provide help to people who are engineers and engineering students in the field so that they can get the most out of their curriculum. With that being said, I hope to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of 2018 and I do have a lot of plans next year to grow my channel and to add videos of many different types, not just the same topic over and over again. Let's get on to this video and in this video I'll be talking about how you can improve your air file CFD or computational fluid dynamic simulations in ANSYS or any other CFD software. I'll be showing you five different tips with examples of how you can do this. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to use a structured mesh. Now a structured mesh is a mesh used in CFD and finite element applications because they are very quick to generate. A structured mesh also lets you fine tune the mesh in specific areas very easily. You can see the difference here between the unstructured mesh and the structured mesh used in two CFD applications. The thing is that when it comes to air files, the geometry is not very complicated, which is why it is highly recommended to use a structured mesh. They will give you a lot more accurate results. An unstructured mesh can be used if the geometry is quite complicated, such as a space shuttle or an airplane or something like that. But when it comes to airfoil, you're better off sticking to a structured mesh. I'll show you how to do that in ANSYS Workbench here. Basically, the first thing you do is you use the face split feature in your geometry option in any CAD software to split your face up into many regions. The idea is that for airfoils, this can be done universally in, a, in one way. You, you set, make a line near your card length and you set your card distance over there. And you also make a line which splits up the middle of your airfoil. And the idea is to split up your geometry into four domains, which you can mesh separately. And this will give you a lot more control over your meshing process. And the way you can fine tune it will be greatly improved. The next thing you want to do is to go in your meshing feature in your CAD software. For this case, it is ANSYS. And you will have to use your face meshing feature to do this. The last thing you want to do is to add an edge sizing because of the fact that you will have to make sure your boundary layer near the airfoil is captured well. So the mesh has to be a lot more dense in that region too. The way you do this is to set a bias in your, um, in your CFD program. You basically set your number of divisions up and down and then you can set a bias to achieve that feature. You can see me doing that very easily over here. The idea is to create a very dense mesh next to your airfoil so you can perform your simulation in an appropriate manner. Okay, so tip number two is to use far domains. Now this is obvious because you can see many NASA wind tunnels, SpaceX, um, you know, Boeing and stuff like that. When they do do their CFD, they set their domain very far away. Now this is because of the fact that it does take more time to solve because your domain is bigger, but simultaneously you will get a lot more accurate results since the pressure values will be captured in that area. And you will not have things like, you know, pressure bouncing off the walls or flow not being captured very well. There can be a case where you can have like a shockwave bounce off a wall if you set your domain too close. Then this can create problems. You will not get a very accurate solution. Okay, so the third tip is to use a turbulence model. So now, but if, if you're doing an inviscid analysis, you won't need this. But in most cases, it's, even if it's air or something like that, and even if it's a rarefied gas, so if you're simulating something at a very high altitude where the density is very low and viscosity is low as well, even stuff for high temperatures, you will, it is much recommended to use a turbulence model because especially at high speed flows, no high speed flow can be, really be laminar. So this is why you should use a turbulence model in your simulation. For airfoils specifically, the one I use is Spalar Almara. Now the Spalar Almara is the commonly used for airfoils since you don't need a very highly accurate mesh to get a good result. It does have very good near wall treatments. And you can see me doing this quickly here in ANSYS. Most of the NASA, the, the publications at NASA, they also use Spalar Almara since it's a very reliable model and you can get quite a decent result when it comes to airfoils specifically. 
Okay, so tip number four is to check your value of the wall Y plus. In turbulent flows, there is something called the Y plus value. Now the Y plus value is a non-dimensionalized value next to your boundary layer. So since your boundary layer in a turbulent flow is very skewed, the Y plus value is, is a factor of, it, it breaks up the boundary layer into many pieces and it can tell you how your simulation behaves. So the idea when it comes to the Y plus value is to compare your boundary layer viscosity, your shear stress next to the wall because you guys know in fluid mechanics that the shear stress equals mu times du over dy where du over dy means is your velocity gradient so it is important to check this y plus value now when it comes to Spilar Almara the y plus value is recommended to be below 20 it can either be that or it needs to be very high so above 50 or something the value will depend on your mesh so if you see that a value is not very good so for example if you have values like 20, 30 this means that it's not very accurate so that brings me to tip number five, which is adapt the boundary. So what this means is in ANSYS, there's a feature where you can adapt your mesh. So the mesh near the wall, the airfoil wall, you can make it more dense by adding a few more divisions in that mesh. And the way you do that is you, you simply use adapt boundary feature in ANSYS. I'm pretty sure other CFT programs will also have this feature as well. What that does is it creates a, a thinner boundary layer and it lets you define a more accurate mesh. And I have an example over here showing how it looks. So the adapt boundary feature, feature is quite a helpful tool to get better and more accurate results from your turbulent com computational fluid dynamic simulations. Okay, so that, that is it guys for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something new about turbulent CFD. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you have any friends in engineering who are doing simulations in grad school or even like even for projects and stuff like that, um, please send this video to them because it'll be like a useful tool. And with that being said, uh, a happy new year to you guys. I hope you guys have a good 2018. I hope it's your best year. I personally will have plans to grow this channel quite, quite ex extensively. Um, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and have a good weekend. See you guys in the next video. Take care.